Good morning. Good morning, everybody. You'll be pleased to know we're doing a quick singing practice again before the service to get you warmed up. <laughs> this is a wee thing, it's in one of the songs. Well, we don't need to go to the slide or anything, but try this. <laughs> heal us, heal us today. Can you sing that? Heal us, heal us today. It's not on the screen, so don't look at the screen. Heal us, heal us today. Heal us, heal us today. And at the end it goes, Heal us, Lord Jesus. Heal us, Lord Jesus. Once again, Heal us, Lord Jesus. When the song comes up, there's a bit before it, and then you join in, so it goes something like, La 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 la. seven verses so you won't have any problem by the end. <coughs> the blessing song which you've become very good at, um, I thought you needed a wee bit of a charm so we're going to do it in three parts today. So the choir are going to help us. Uh, so this side will do the first part, this side the second part and this side the third part. And I'm go we're going to come down in front of you to help, you, help lead you and I'm going to come away from the microphone. Mm. Now go with me. Sing it once through all together, just normally, all together. Mm. Now go in peace, now go in love, from the Father above. Jesus Christ the Son, stay with you till the day is done. Holy Spirit encircle you in all.
thanks so much for uh, for tolerating me. But no, that was really terrific. I've not done that successfully with any other congregation in three parts like that, and it was it was really good. So we'll do that at the end of the service, and I think this is probably the last week that we do this blessing song. But well done. That was that was really good. So when it comes around, just follow your leaders, and you won't go wrong. Thank you. Well, well let's <laughs> Ashton Parish Church this morning. Welcome, especially if you're a visitor to our congregation. Sorry, I just realised I've left my phone here. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm just going to switch it off. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, I once forgot to take my phone out of my pocket while conducting a funeral service. It was in silent, and it went off as I was doing the service, and it vibrated. <laughs> I thought I was having a heart attack. <laughs> it was my brother who was on the phone, and at the end of it, I, I finished the service, and I went back to him and said, I'm really sorry, I couldn't answer the phone, I was doing a funeral. He said, oh, I thought it was a school assembly. <laughs> Good morning, welcome to see you, especially if you visit our congregation. Welcome also those of you who are watching online, either live or in due course. It is good to see you all here this morning. We are back from our sojourn for the last week. Uh, it was very nice, um, and I'll tell you a bit more about it in a few seconds. But let's share our gathering song. Welcome everybody, it's good to see you here. We stand to sing. Welcome everybody, it's good to see you here. Welcome everybody, it's good to see you here. Welcome everybody, it's good to see you here. Gathering in this place. Welcome everybody. are as follows the service next Sunday now <laughs> yes boy am I feeling as I'm on a street with this <laughs> our last open air service well it would intentionally be our first open air service given that the first two open air services ended up indoors because of the rain the last Sunday in June was horizontal if you remember Sunday the 24th of June was a steady drizzle and I made the rash promise that the last one will definitely be sunny. <laughs> or, or, or we would be back in here and, with I would conduct the service in my shorts oh. in a paddling pool. <laughs> so we are going to pray for rain. Let us pray. No, for sunshine. Let us pray. So the steadfast silver band will be in attendance. We will have strawberries and, ice, strawberries and ice cream after the service. It will be a Sunday on Sunday's event. So please do 10.30 to start. And it's a joint service at St. Ninians. And all are welcome. All will be made most welcome indeed. So please do come and join us. 
If it is in climate weather, it will be here. We'll make that call probably Friday or Saturday, Wednesday. The forecast is a bit clearer. At the minute, it's looking about 15% chance of rain. Mm. Whatever that means. <laughs> what does that actually mean? I don't know. It means there's an 85% chance it won't rain, depending how you look at it. Anyway. Next uh, Sunday, the 4th of September, this is a service of rededication for our members of our organisations. Uniformed youth organisations will parade to and from the church, and a colour party rehearsal will take place on Friday the 2nd at 7pm in the church. This is uh, really sort of getting back post-COVID as everything starts back up properly for the first time in two or three years. The Tuesday morning coffee mornings continue between 10 and 12. Cost is two pounds. Please do come and support. And that's on Tuesday. The Dementia Cafe opened for the first time on Friday. It was absolutely fantastic. Huge thanks and congratulations to John, Phyllis and Gillian who have really worked so hard on this to bring it to fruition. And the 26, 26 pool of volunteers that we have who are there to run the cafe. It couldn't be done without them. It was a great opening on Friday. There was a number of people there and it, was really, it went really well. So it really was fantastic. So thank you to all. If you'd like to assist with the running of the cafe, please speak to Gillian or Phyllis. There's still more space, more, more the better. Um, the cafe is looking for donations of board games, such as snakes and ladders, dominoes, ludo, etc., which, which you no longer use. Um, and if you'd like to help either, please contact Gillian or Phyllis. Steadfast by Silver Band, who are going to be playing open air next Sunday at the bandstand. <laughs> we'll hold the concert in Old Good Looking Ashton Parish Church on Saturday, the 3rd of September, 7.30. Tea and coffee will be available after the concert. Entry will be by donation on the door in the night. And with all proceeds going to the 3rd Good Boys Brigade Kilt Fundraising Appeal. So please do come and support that. Please intimate it to friends and family, encourage them to come along. As you no doubt have heard on the Sundays they've been here, the band are excellent, but there's so much more to the repertoire, and this is a chance for them to broaden that. So please do come and share. The third good at Boys Brigade, all sections are now being started for the 22-23 se session. Anchor Boys on Fridays, Juniors on Thursdays, and the company and senior section on Fridays as well. The details are there and we'll make they're published on our website. We're planning to have a fish, and, fish supper night. So we're inviting you to come along and join and have a fish supper night. There are two, um, yeah, I'm reading what's here, so right. Okay. There are two, less, there's two um, places to sign up for this on the communion table this morning. Please do come along to this on, it's a fun night, just an idea of getting people together. 7.15, you can either have a sausage supper or a fish supper. Thank you. Do I try that again? <laughs> you can either have a sausage supper or a fish supper. <laughs> but it says here small. Small? small. Okay. So please do sign up and come along on the 9th. Uh, all, it's just a, an idea of a, of a bit of a fun night and a social night. So please do come along on the 9th. 7.15, please sign up for whatever you want. The details are on the, the, the forms here at the community table. Please add your name. And that's the details for it. Elders District Books are available for uplift from the Cumbria Hall this Sunday onwards. Please note... The books come with some time sensitive information which we've asked to be delivered to all members of the congregation before the 31st of August. Um, so, so we come to good news. So good news, the schools are back. <laughs> the summer holidays are at an end um, and the schools are back. So we will remember the pupils and the teachers um, as this new term starts. I uh, remember also uh, particularly good at primary, I think, because of the situation they face. The fact the building work is still ongoing after so long, um, and it really was quite chaotic on the Wednesday, on the Tuesday before the pupils went back in. But obviously good news that the schools are back. Good news too I've got here, the parish players are back tomorrow at 7.30. 
If anyone would like to go along and lend their voice and body, 7.30 tomorrow at Lightly Hall, they're doing a panto. The panto's back. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> the panto this year is Jack and the Beanstack. Stop. Stop. Sorry. <laughs> I wonder why that didn't. Of course, it's stock, isn't it? It looked like a C, sorry. Jack and the Beanstalk. Stack. <laughs> Stack of beans sounds like fun though, doesn't it? That could be cleansing. So, please do come along. Um, good news. All right, good. Oh, thank you very much. Good news. Oh, brilliant, yes. Good news indeed. Elizabeth. This is Burns in here. Elizabeth won the first places in Certificate of Merit for her best exhibit of hobbies for any craft item in the large horticultural show. On Saturday. <laughs> Congratulations. And she does, Sylvia has said sorry for embarrassing you. <laughs> Actually, I'm not embarrassed at all, I'm fine. <laughs> uh, good news, it's my wife's birthday on Wednesday. Yeah, it's Wednesday, yeah. <laughs> I'm just about to say that. Good news, the sunbed got fixed. Why is that good news? Well, you see, the places where we had an interesting holiday in Skiathos, it was a lovely place, beautiful, sun was lovely, weather was lovely. On the second day we were there, there I was on these lovely sunbeds that the place had. And Shona asked me to go and do something, stood up, and then sat back down again, and all I heard was a huge crack <laughs> as this wooden base sunbed disintegrated. Cracked. Fell guilty. So we reported it due course and left it at that. Next day we came back, two others had broken and I wasn't there. So I felt better than ever. That was good news. The good news was they were all fixed as well. Good news, the bed got fixed in the apartment we were in as well because while we're also there, I don't know about you, but sometimes you'd put a leg up just to clean, to dry your leg. So I put my leg up at the end of the bed and the bed fell apart. <laughs> Give way. It's one of these single beds with a bed, you know, so just gave way. And of course, me being me decided I can fix this. <laughs> me was told he was hornless in second year, but never mind. So I asked Shona to give me a hand. And I'm like, don't miss it, what have you done? What have you brought? Ar, 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 ar. Which is an accurate description of what she said. <laughs> so I asked for her help moving the mattress. What are you moving the mattress for? And I moved the, as we moved the mattress, the front of the bed had fallen off, and as we moved the mattress, so all the planks that were underneath the bed fell off one by one. <laughs> so you can imagine, do, 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 do. It's a bit like East Enders theme tune. Do, do, do. Which increased the tension in the room, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it increased the tension. And I'm quite confident saying I can fix this. No, you can't. Really. Just leave it. For goodness sake, you're making it worse. Good news. All it was was a loose screw. Good news, it was fixed. Good news, I lay on it that night and it never fell apart again. <laughs> We had a fantastic holiday, so that was good news. <laughs> good news, the rest of the holiday went by without any incidents, so, apart from a broken washing line. So, that's not it. So, any other items of good news, please let them know. We hope to see our young church back soon as well, um, not next week, but the following week, as we get back into things in, in September as well. For more information about that in due course. The idea for the first is to really try and re-engage with people post-COVID. You and I are both all aware, obviously, the numbers are down here this Sunday morning and they're trying to encourage people to come back out. We know there's still a lot of people who are a bit, feeling a bit wary about coming along and being part of the fellowship. And we really want to try and go over to people that it is perfectly safe and that it's a good place to be and hopefully a, a, a joyous place to be on a Sunday morning, precisely. Couldn't have put it better myself. 
So these, that's the idea, but these are all our intimations, and this, that was all our good news. So let us come before God in our worship and in our praise. We're going to sing hymn 350. Hymn 350, I think, Tom, did you run this? Have you done this before? Run this over? No? Sort of. Sort of. <laughs> Callum, uh, uh, we didn't really know this one, but I quite like the words of it. So we're going to sing um, 350 from CH4, When Jesus the Healer. For the first couple of verses, I'm happy to sing it and everyone join in with the healer's bits in italics. Um, and after two verses, maybe you could all stand and join in when you feel able. But if, if you want to just keep singing the healer's bits right to the end, that's okay. But you will pick it up and there are plenty of verses. So we'll, we'll all stand after the second verse and join in as best as we can. It's quite catchy. It's, it's a kind of pokey tune. It's really nice. When Jesus the healer passed through Galilee, he morning. So let's turn to God's word. First of all, from the Old Testament, we're going to read from Jeremiah chapter 1 and verses 4 to 10. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 1 verses 4 to 10. And Marvin will lead us in our readings this morning. Jeremiah chapter 1 verses 4 to 10. The word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Ah, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am only a child. But the Lord said to me, do not say I'm only a child. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. 
Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. Amen. The call of Jeremiah, the reality of Jeremiah being set free, as it were, to be the prophet, to do the Lord's bidding. As we come before God in our thoughts and prayers this morning, there's one other information to make, and that is to let, inform you of the death of, of the husband of one of our members, Marvin Semple's husband, Andy, passed away last week. Marvin, uh, they stay in Three Cow View, and Andy's funeral service will take place on Tuesday the 30th at 2 o'clock at the crematorium. We remember Marvin and the family at this time, and commend them to God. We'll share with them, particularly in our prayers of intercession to come. Let's take a moment to come before God in our prayers. Let us unite our hearts. Let us pray and we will also share in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Loving and gracious God, we gather as brothers and sisters, bound by our love for you and your love for us and for the wonderful universe and world that you've created and that we are a small part of. We meet here united as one, drawn here by our lover for Jesus. We come to sing and to share more of your story. We come to listen and learn more of your love and to understand more of what we are called to do in this amazing world. Lord God, you teach us that we are created in your own image. We each have a part to play in bringing the kingdom here and now. We each have gifts given to us to utilize and to share. Help us to recognize these gifts and to utilize these gifts for the furtherance of your kingdom. We come humbly into your presence, aware of our own faults and failings, Lord. We, we come and offer our apologies for all that we've done or failed to do this week. We ask your forgiveness and seek to turn back to you and choose to follow in your ways. Loving God, as we come today, we are well aware of the needs of the world we see them every day in our TV screens and the news. We see the needs for peace, justice, reconciliation, sharing kindness, and a, more, a better sense of being nice to one another. We read it in our papers. We see it in our TVs. But Lord, we think not just globally, but locally as well, that these things are needed too to create a more just society, to create a society where all are valued and all feel welcome. We know we have work to do to bring peace and justice, but Lord, through your gifts, empowered by your love, that is what will happen as we bring your kingdom here on earth. Lord, give us strength and courage to step out in your name, Give us strength and courage to proclaim ourselves to be your children. Give us strength and courage to encourage others to come and join us to be one with us. Give us strength and courage to take on board what needs to be done. Help us to take your love to all in need in our communities, in our own locations, in our own families, that we may offer to them you, the loving God through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. You, the inclusive God who sees only his children. You, who breaks down the barriers that we seek to place in life. Father, as a family now, we take time to pray together raising our hearts and voices as one, as together as a family we share in the words that your son taught us to say together in the words of the family prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. 
Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We turn to read from God's word once more. We read from Luke chapter 13, verses 10 to 17. Again, more from leaders in our reading. And it also includes one of these narratives that we've kind of just sung about in M350, where Jesus set someone free. On a Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues, and a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her, and immediately she straightened up and praised, the, praised God. Indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the synagogue ruler said to the people, There are six days for work, so come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. The Lord answered him, You hypocrites, doesn't each one of you on... Doesn't each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or donkey from the stall and lead him out to give it water? Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what bound her? Then he said this, all his, oppon all his opponents were humiliated, but the people were delighted with all the wonderful things he was doing. Amen. Thanks be to God for these readings from his holy word, and to his name be all the praise and the glory. We sing together CH4, hymn 542, Lord speak to me that I may speak.
Jesus. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. I had a good idea to start this this morning. I was going to show the Queen. I want to break free from the works album. However, the problem is, as soon as we show a video like that, what happens is Facebook cuts us off. And you don't hear anything else from we will because we kind of go over the copyright issues. So I'm not using it. But I would have used it. Do you remember the song? Or do you ever know? Have you ever heard the song? I want to break free. It's one where uh, the whole of Queen are dressed as females doing the hoovering. A bit like Coronation Street. It's like a Coronation Street setting. And the idea of breaking free from the relationships they're in or breaking free from what binds them and holds them down. I wonder what you would want to break free from. <coughs> Anything? Planning Sorry? Planning meals. Planning meals. <laughs> that is yes. I want to break free from planning meals. That we've told you before, that, that discussion that goes on in the manse. What do you want for dinner? Don't know. What do you want? I don't know. What do you want? I'm not bothered. What do you want? I'm not bothered either. Okay, we'll have this and I don't like that. <laughs> You can figure out who's who in that conversation, by the way. I'll leave it to your own imaginations. <coughs> breaking free from something. Breaking free from that that binds it or brings us down. Breaking free from that which causes us issues. Breaking free sometimes even from relationships that are toxic. I want to break free. Virtually all of the healing narratives that are in the New T or in the Gospels are of Jesus setting people free. But it's not just the act of, of healing that's important, it's what it represents. The one we had read this morning in Luke's Gospel, the woman is healed. But the point of it is not that she's healed, it is that he's questioning the Sabbath. He's questioning the rules by which people live by. He's breaking them free from the ties that bind. Breaking free from the traditions, if you like. The idea of working on the Sabbath. Do you know, think about it. Going back to my childhood, I remember my grand not wanting us even to go and play football. Or kick a ball around the green on a Sunday because it was the Sabbath. She certainly would never put a washing out. Not even if it was a good drying day. And these were few and far between, are they not? But here's Jesus questioning and challenging and setting people free to understand God's love. He's setting people free from the strictures of tradition and rules that are created by men, by people. The idea of doing things in the Sabbath. I remember we had good friends, and probably told this story before, but we had good friends in Paisley, and uh, Alan was brought up in the islands, and his family were Church of Scotland. And the other families round about them all went to the Free Church. And what would happen would be, on a Sunday morning, Alan's dad looked after his farm, and a Sunday morning, his neighbour, Saturday night, his neighbours would leave the milk cans for him to go and milk their cows on the Sunday. Because it was okay if he broke the Sabbath, because he was just Church of Scotland. But it wasn't okay for them to break the Sabbath, because they were free church. And he would go and milk their cows for them. What is better? I mean, breaking free. What hypocrisy. Oh, we're okay. Our hands are clean. We're not breaking the Sabbath. We'll just get somebody else to do it. 
the idea of breaking free from things is an important one. And the idea of the healing narratives in, Jesus, in the Gospels are of Jesus setting people free from all that binds them. Free, that's a shame. All right. I have this effect on people. <laughs> you all right, Liz? You all right? She'll care. Jeremiah is set free from birth. And his freedom is to proclaim the good, what, G, what God wants him to proclaim. The prophets were there to be the voice of God. And sometimes what the prophets said was not popular. Sometimes what the prophets declared was against the best interests of the state and the rulers and the people themselves at times. So they were not popular. But they had to do what they were called to do. They were free through God's love and grace to proclaim the good news. So Jesus is setting us free to be the people he wants us to be. He's cutting through the hypocrisy of this world and setting us free to love. He's setting us free to be the people we are meant to be. He's setting us free and is allowing us rather than looking down to look up. One of the things I thought about for this morning, I'm not going to do the full script. These are wonderful scripts called Jesus and Peter. Conversations between Jesus and Peter, written by John Bell and Graham Mall. I think we've shared some of them before in our worship. In the one called The Keys, Jesus is having a discussion with Peter about the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus, uh, part of the conversation is this, where Peter says to Jesus, but you know that they're talking about welcoming people into the kingdom of heaven at the gates of heaven. And Peter says, but you know, Jesus, the people I really like to welcome are those who have had a hard time in life. How many of you feel as though you've had a hard time in life? How many of you feel at times you've had a hard time in life? The ones who were ignored or turned off by the church, but who still remembered you. The ones who looked down all the time that they were on earth because no one ever, no one ever said, look up. No one ever said, you're important. No one ever touched them or listened to the story. And Jesus replied, I know what you mean. I met a woman the other day, she was a widow. She had once done something wrong in her early days and though I'd forgiven her, nobody else did. I looked at her eyes and remembered all the people who made her cry. I looked at her hands and remembered all the good work she had done, which no one had thanked her for. I looked into her heart and remembered how it had been broken and yet how it still cared and loved. And I said to her, Bessie, there's people here that I'd love likely to meet. And I was about to introduce her to Martha and Lazarus when she took me by my hand and said, Jesus, I've had three surprises since I came to heaven. The first was finding all the people who are here. The second was finding all the people who aren't here. And the third surprise was finding that I was here myself. Setting us free. Setting us free to look up rather than look down. How many times people are talked to or talked down to or excluded. And that is one of the, the reasons for the, the healing narratives in the Gospels. Is that all the people are excluded. The leper, the man with the hand, the woman we're reading about today. They're all excluded in some way. And Jesus breaks free from their exclusion and includes them in the kingdom. He includes them in the welcome of God. He includes them in the fellowship of grace. He sets them free. We need to be set free from all that binds us. We need to be set free from all that wears us down and keeps us down. We need to be set free from those 
who bind us and bring us down. We want to be free. We want to be free to know that love. We want to be free to share that love. We want to be free that we can then free others too by sharing with them the good news that we know in our hearts. I want to break free. Jesus breaks the shackles that binds us. He breaks the conventions that overwhelm us. He challenges the norm and allows us to see what can be. And that's why we rejoice and celebrate as his family. Because he sets us free to look up. He sets us free to be who we are. He sets us free to be the best of what we can be. And he gives us our gifts and skills. He gives us the people around about us who love us and lift us up. He sets us free to know his love. Look up. Don't look down. Know that you are freed through the love of God. Free from all that binds you. Free from all that wears you down. Free from even the bad times of the present moment. There's still good coming down the line. Free. And that is just something wonderful. That we too can be healed. And set free through his love. Amen. And thanks be to God. We're going to sing together to God's grace and glory. Hymn number 718. We cannot measure how you feel. Hymn 718.
Let us come before God in our prayers for others. We remember especially Marvin, uh, Marvin Semple and her family at this difficult time. Let us pray. Lord of the Sabbath, we're glad to spend time here together today with you, that you are in our every pres- ever present in our lives. We are grateful for the buildings in which we, that we share in, where people can gather and meet to worship you in safety and comfort. We thank you too for the organisations restarting the, all the groups that will meet and share in these places. The young boys and girls who will come to the different or uniformed organisations. Our young church preparing to start back. Our guild. All of the organisations, Lord, that are there to meet and to share. We thank you, Father, for the groups that are not part of this church, but use our premises that are allowing others to break free in different ways. We think of our going hospice at this time. We thank you for the new ways in which we can use the buildings that we have to allow others to break free in different ways. We thank you for the start of our dementia cafe. We thank you that here in this place today we can worship in safety and in comfort. We thank you for people who are there to share with us and lead us. For those who are there to give their voices. We thank you for those who are there to provide the technological support allowing us to have our screens and to put all this on Facebook. All who enhance our time together here in this place. All who are here to make sure that we can come and go safely. Lord, we remember people who do not have the luxury of a building where they can safely gather to worship. We remember congregations who meet in secret because they face persecution, because they face hostility. Help them to break free from that hostility, Lord. We remember congregations who share in difficult times. We remember and give you thanks, Lord, for all who will share online today and tomorrow in the days to come and hear our singing and the words of this place and will find comfort and strength. We pray and remember for those who will meet at homes and coffee shops in all different parts of our world and our community. Lord, wherever people meet, you are there. Wherever people are, you are with them. You are there to break the bonds, to set people free. For you know each one of us, even from the beginning of all our time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Healing Lord, we are fortunate to have access to the NHS and to all the health care that we need and the specialists who are there in all areas of health and well-being. We are thankful for all who work in healthcare settings and give their time and talents to helping others. We remember especially all those who have struggled through the pandemic. We remember those who have to struggle to access healthcare. Those who don't have the money to pay for it and are denied it. We pray for all those who are training to become healthcare providers we're thinking about it as a career. Lord, we thank you for your skill and dedication. We remember too all who work in our emergency services and we commend them to you, Lord, and give you thanks that we know that they are there for us when we need them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We thank you for those who are there to teach our young people as the schools start back and new term begins And we thank you, Lord, for this time the new term will be hopefully COVID-free. We pray for an end of the restrictions and the reality of school life starting back as normal. We remember all our young people in our nurseries. We remember all within the primary schools in Gurug, in Moorfoot, in St. Ninians. We remember our high schools in St. Columbus in Clydeview Academy. And we remember our young people who have now left school 
And you now look forward to new beginnings and new challenges. Those going to university and college or a new job or apprenticeship. Lord, wherever their, wherever their journey takes them, bless them. Be with all who are educators for all the knowledge they have to give. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Merciful God, we cannot thank you enough for loving us as we are and always willing to forgive when we fail you. We give thanks to the people in our lives who treat us with mercy and forgive us when we fail them. We remember people who live under abusive or unjust rulers and we pray that they too may know your mercy. We pray for all who work to help people in those difficult situations, volunteers and paid staff, those who are out and about in our community and in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. <coughs> Loving God, we pray that you may set free those who are struggling at this time. Set them free from the bonds of their illness. Set them free from all that limits them. We pray that you may be with all who mourn and share the reality of bereavement at this time. Lord Jesus Christ, may your mercy be upon them. We remember especially Marvin. We remember especially Marvin Semple at this time and her family as we commend Andy to your rest and peace. Be with them and bless them. And be with all who mourn this day, Lord, that they may know that they are free in your love. Father, be with us now in a moment of silence as we bring to you our own situations, our own needs, and commend ourselves and others to you in our own prayers now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, <clears throat> hear us. Lord, graciously hear us and give us patience to wait until you call us to speak or to act in ways that build your kingdom here and now. May we be bold and courageous as we work for your kingdom to come and may we know your presence with us each moment, guiding us forward always. Lord, hear our prayers. In Jesus' name we ask. Thank you for coming along this morning. Can I remind you? Uh, remind you, next Sunday will be sunny. <laughs> next Sunday will be nice. And as that such, we will meet in the bandstand at 10.30 with the Steadfast Band. If, if, there is a slightest hint that it may not be nice and it may indeed be inclement, then it will be 10.30 here and there will be a paddling pool involved. <laughs> And it will be cold. <laughs> but it's my penance for promising something that I've unfair, I have failed to deliver. But we look forward to next Sundays. And there will be Sundays on Sunday. Invite your friends. Invite anyone you know. Come along and share at the bandstand at 10.30. We look forward to seeing you then. We're going to close by singing hymn 680. You're called to tell the story. We then have the benediction. And then our sung blessing. We're singing it, well, you know we're singing it kind of differently this morning. Uh, now go in peace. You are called to tell the story.
please remember to take them from the company hall. Go now in the freedom of God to love and to be loved. Go now in the freedom of God to share the good news of Jesus Christ and his love. Go now in the freedom of God to be the people he calls us to be. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, descend upon and dwell within your heart this day, remain with you and be with you, and all whom you love and share your journey with, now and indeed forevermore. Thank you.